The indication for use of non-invasive ventilation is if your patient is in acute type 2 respiratory failure. The contraindications to NIV is an undrained pneumothorax. The precautions can be uncooperative patients, facial trauma, fixed upper airway obstruction and some surgeries with esophageal anastomoses. You might be called out to see patients who are on non-invasive ventilation. This is a non-invasive ventilator called a Nippy 3. I'm going to show you how to navigate around the ventilator and talk about how you can increase the inspiratory pressure if you wish to, to give the patient a larger breath during your treatment. At the front of the machine is your main inlet port for your tubing and you also have an exhale port which in your trust you may not use but if you're using intermittent positive pressure ventilation it is sometimes used. The filter from the tubing and the tubing connects straight onto the outlet. At the back of the machine you'll notice the mains cables plugged in and you have an inlet filter which can be removed Check it's clean. If it's not clean, you'll need to find a new one and replace it. We're going to switch the ventilator on here. Takes a couple of seconds and then it will start to flow. So on the left side here, you've got the um, inspiratory pressure, the expiratory pressure, inspiratory time, backup rate and the mode. On the right hand side you have the high alarm, low alarm, the help button, menu button and an alarm mute button. So we start at the top. This is the inspiratory positive airway pressure and to change the settings on the inspiratory positive airway pressure you just press the button and then use the plus and minus button to go up and down. When you've reached the pressure that you're happy with just press the set button to accept the setting and this may be helpful as I said earlier with your patients who require some deeper breaths during your treatment period. Now going down to the bottom here to the mode this shows you the mode that the patient's on and you can adjust the mode by pressing the mode button and going up and down again using your plus and minus and then select the mode that you wish to have and now that our patient's on pressure support ventilation. Again, if you want to adjust the EPAP, you press the EPAP button and use the plus and minus button to go up and down. When you're happy, press the set button and release. And the same for all of this side. If you want to check how much battery you have left in the ventilator, you can press the set button twice um, and it tells you how long you've got. So at these settings, you've got approximately three hours, 33 minutes left of your internal battery power. It also tells you when the next service is due. If you look at the screen, you have two bars, your pressure bar and your flow bar. The pressure bar indicates your inspiratory positive airway pressure that your patient's reaching and when they breathe out, their expiratory positive airway pressure. At the top of the screen, you have your total rate that your patient is achieving, and you have an estimated tidal volume. If you look at your IPAP and your EPAP settings, on the screen above them, you have little numbers in the top corners. These numbers relate to the trigger settings of the ventilator and how easy it is for the patient to trigger both inspiration and expiration. When the patient is triggering a breath, the little number will light up white. When the high alarm goes off, there will be a red screen flashing and it will give you some ideas on how to troubleshoot your circuit and your ventilator to solve the issue. To mute the alarm, you press the alarm mute button. When the low alarm goes off, again you will see a red screen with some troubleshooting ideas to help you solve the issue. And to mute the alarm, you press the alarm mute button. We're going to just um, fit you up for a mask now to use with the breathing machine. Okay, we're going to just try the large one first. That's a little bit too large. I think 
the medium is going to be a perfect size for you. It just goes over to the bridge of your nose and just under your lips. And I have a, a medium mask here, okay? Um, it's got a head strap on the back. We're going to lift the head strap over the back of your head, pop the face mask on your face, um, and then tighten the straps. Okay. The mask does have to have quite a tight seal on your face, so we will need to pull it fairly, fairly tight, okay? Yeah. So just lifting it over your head now. I'll just get your fringe out of the way, over. Get that comfortable, okay? Mm -hmm. Put that one in. That's it. Okay, and then we're just going to tighten the straps at the bottom um, and then at the top. Okay, just going to check for any leaks from the breathing machine. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the um, exhale valve on the breathing circuits. It's really important that this valve is kept clear at all times. And this is where the waste gas is going to come out. Um, it's also important to note that there is a difference between this valve here and this exhale valve. This valve in the mask is called a pressure relief valve. It's really important to note that that valve closes when there's flow coming from the ventilator um, and then opens when there's no flow. It's a safety mechanism to ensure that if the ventilator fails for any reason, the patient can then inhale and exhale through the, the hole in the mask.